In Tolkien's works, elves, unlike humans, never went to the dark side. Yes, some of them did evil. For example, the Noldor who massacred the Tyleri to take their ships, or the sons of Theonor who raised their swords against other elves who took possession of the Silmarils. But firstly, these were infrequent exceptions, and secondly, even so, they never sided with the enemy, the Dark Lord Morgoth. There were elves whom Morgoth had captured, enslaved, and by magic perverted their essence, turning them into orcs. They served him, but not of their own free will, and these creatures could no longer be called elves. There was no such thing as an elf serving the Dark Lord, with a single exception. The name of that exception was the noble elf Maeglin. What drove him to it and what became of him further, now I will tell you. Maeglin was of noble birth. His father was Eol the Dark Elf, the most skillful blacksmith among his people, a hermit and a friend of the dwarves. Eol was a distant relative of the High King of all the Sindar, Thingol. Formerly Thingol was the king of all the elves of Beleriand. Maeglin's mother was Aradel, an elfess of the Noldor people. She was the daughter of the High King of the Noldor in exile, Fingolfin, and sister to the two elven kings, Fingon and Turgon. Together with Turgon, she and lived in his secret city of Gondolin. Several royal bloods flowed in Maeglin, but he was not a direct heir to any throne. Maeglin was born in the deep forests where his father lived, and in his younger years spent much time traveling with him, learning hunting and crafts and visiting dwarves. But his mother's stories of Noldor kin, heroes, warriors, and rulers, had influenced his soul from a small age. When he learned that his uncle Turgon, ruler of Gondolin, had no heir, Maeglin decided to go to him. Aeolus was against this, for he hated the Noldor, considered them invaders in the lands belonging to the Sindar. But Maeglin did not listen to his father, and while he was away, ran away with his mother, stealing the greatest sword forged by his father, Anguirel. Aeolus rushed in pursuit of his son and wife and followed them into hidden Gondolin. But King Turgon of Gondolin made a rule. Anyone who entered could either stay here or die. It was impossible to return to the open world. Eol refused to obey this rule. He preferred to kill his son and himself, but his poisoned dart hit Maeglin's mother instead of his son. Eventually, Eol was tried and executed, thrown off the walls of the city. But before he died, he cursed his son for turning his back on his father and foretold him the same fate. But Maeglin was not long saddened by the death of his parents. He loved the splendor of Gondolin, and soon he became an associate of the king, his uncle. Very quickly, Maeglin gained more and more honor and power among the Noldor. He gave the king wise counsel, was brave and unstoppable in battle, and skilled in crafts. Through his apprenticeship with his father and the dwarves, he explored the deposits of valuable metals in the surrounding mountains and taught the smiths of Gondolin how to forge even stronger and sharper weapons. But honor and respect were not all Maeglin wanted. His secret passion was the king's daughter and Maeglin's cousin, Idril, with whom he fell unrequitedly in love. It was his unrequited love for Idril and jealousy that was the starting point of Maeglin's betrayal. King Turgon made an alliance with one of the chiefs of men, Huor, and the latter foretold that a new hope would be born from the union of their families. And after a time, Huor's son Tuor arrived in Gondolin. He enjoyed the king's favor, so much so that Turgon agreed to marry his daughter Idril to him. This sent Maeglin into a frenzy. But perhaps it would have been all right if he had not been captured by Morgoth's orcs while scouting for new iron deposits in the mountains. Though Maeglin was brave and steadfast, he feared the torture he had been threatened with in Angband. After Morgoth offered him the alternative of giving up the secret way to Gondolin in exchange for becoming its ruler and Idril's husband, Maeglin agreed to the betrayal. Maeglin was then allowed to return to Gondolin where, hiding his treachery, he waited for Morgoth to attack his uncle's kingdom, which soon followed. During the battle, Maeglin found Idril and her son and seized them, intending to kill the child. But Tuor found them and challenged Maeglin. In the battle, Maeglin fell at Tuor's hand, and Tuor threw the elf off the walls of Gondolin. Maeglin died just as his father had, and his name was covered in shame for all elves. Gondolin eventually fell, 
and there was no other elven kingdom in Middle-earth as beautiful as this.